Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. Justin Trudeau disappointed by G20 climate deal. Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping absent from G20. World leaders commit to end deforestation by 2030. Israeli minister denied entrance to COP26 because of her wheelchair. Trudeau presents the case for global carbon pricing at COP26. COVID-19 now the third leading cause of death worldwide. Russia, Ukraine and other Eastern European countries battle with COVID outbreak. Yahoo pulls out of China. To begin, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau states that he is disappointed by the G20 climate deal. Specifically, Trudeau laments that the agreement did not feature stronger commitments and a more precise language. The document replaced wording from previous drafts so that it was less specific. For example, the deadline for hitting net zero carbon emissions was 2050, but this deadline was replaced with mid-century. However, he does acknowledge that limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, an agreement which was made during the deal, is a goal which countries should work towards. There's no question that Canada, along with a number of other countries, would have liked stronger language and stronger commitments on the fight against climate change than others. But we did make significant, significant progress on recognizing 1.5 degrees as the ambition we need to share, on moving forward and identifying the phasing out of coal as an essential goal on uh, fighting uh, and reducing methane emissions as being key and also recognizing with uh, the doubling of Canada's climate financing uh, to the developing world. Uh, there's work to do and we're going to continue that work uh, over the coming days with like-minded partners at COP. While Canada was disappointed about some aspects of the climate deal, the U.S. was disappointed that Russia and China were absent from the diplomatic event. China's President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin cited the COVID-19 virus as their reason for not attending the event. In Russia, COVID-19 cases are spiking. Meanwhile, Xi has not left China in 21 months. Moreover, visiting the G20 would mean that Xi Jinping would have to abide by his country's quarantine requirements. This could mean missing out on an upcoming party Congress meeting. We must do all we can to overcome our differences. And we must rekindle the spirit that led to the creation of this group. In other news, upwards of 100 world leaders have committed to ending or reversing deforestation by 2030 in the first major deal of the COP26 climate summit. Countries that signed this deal include Brazil, Canada, Russia, China, Indonesia, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the U.S., and the U.K. The full list of countries comprise 85% of the world's forests. The pledge has been welcomed by experts. However, they warn that a previous deal in 2014 failed to live up to their claims of stopping deforestation. They highlight that these words must be put into action. Let's work together, not just to protect the forests, but also to ensure that the forests return. It is this simple. Let's get to work. We can do this. And taking a whole of government approach and working in our case with Congress to deploy up to $9 billion in U.S. funding through 2030 to conserve and restore our forests and mobilize billions more from our partners. In other related news, Israel's energy minister, Karine El Harar, was denied entry into the Global Climate Summit. Karine uses a wheelchair and police would not allow her vehicle to come through. The conference organizers knew that Karine uses a wheelchair, but the minister's car was kept from approaching for two hours. After two hours, she was offered a ride on the shuttle. However, this shuttle was not wheelchair accessible. El Harar could not attend that day, but was able to attend the next. At the COP26 climate talks, Trudeau also urged the world to negotiate a minimum carbon price. He compared this with the minimum 15% corporate tax that 130 countries have signed on to. He argues that this ensures that countries who are pricing pollution are not penalized for doing so. Create a global standard around putting a price on pollution. A few years ago, uh, nobody would have even imagined that we could set a global minimum corporate tax. And suddenly we have. These are things that are the right ideas that when their time has come, people start to adopt. Shifting gears, COVID-19 has become the third leading cause of death around the world. Recently, the global death toll of COVID-19 hit 5 million. This means that in less than two years that the virus has spread, 
Five million individuals have been confirmed to have died by COVID-19. However, this is likely less than the amount who actually died from coronavirus since many individuals lost their lives at home or without medical attention. Throughout the almost two years since COVID-19 made its way across the globe, hotspots for the virus have continually changed. The international community watched as Italy was devastated by the virus, as well as China, India, and Canadian provinces like Alberta and Saskatchewan. Currently, COVID-19 hotspots are located in Russia, Ukraine, and other parts of Eastern Europe. There, rumors, misinformation, and distrust of the government have culminated to a peak of COVID-19 cases. Lastly, Yahoo Inc. declares that they will officially pull out of China. They state that working in China is increasingly challenging as the Chinese government expands their control over tech companies. Many of the services offered by Yahoo were already blocked by China's digital censorship. Resultantly, the move is seen as a symbolic one. This means that Yahoo's services will no longer be available to those in mainland China as of November 1st, 2021. That's all for today. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Ava Blackwell. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our latest content.